Hi, Teresa. Good morning, Mike. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. How helpful has this week off been for your team, especially when you come back and you know you now have a division opponent coming in on Sunday? Well, I mean, we'll see. I think we, you know, have had a couple of days off. Hopefully, guys feel better. Hopefully, guys feel healthier, and we're ready to work and get something done. What is what is today? Is it just practice? Meetings? No, it's practice. Yeah. It's practice. You know, we have to get better. There's you know, only so much time on a bye week uh, that you have. You know, CBA says they have Thursday to Sunday off, so we worked on Wednesday. We practiced Wednesday, uh, and we'll practice today. What didn't work with Josh, Mike, as, as a project that you brought in, hoping to get something at receiver? Uh, just, just gave me an opportunity, and you know, didn't didn't see enough there, and went with another player. The Colts. Uh, they look any different than when you saw them? Just yeah, a few more passes. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's uh, you know, they give them a lot of credit. They never go away. You know, they scored. Uh, they scored in the last uh, 30 seconds of all three wins. So, never out of it. Um, you know, battle back against Houston. So, however the game goes, whether we're up or we're down, I mean, it's going to be um, something that we're going to have to focus on and be able to finish. You know, or have the ability to try to come back because they, they're, you know, they're they're going to battle and then they're not going anywhere. So, you know, give them a lot of credit. Mike, much was made of your response, I guess, to the officiating uh, committee. Was that report accurate? And if so, I guess why reply all to to the message that you got there? Well, first I would say that you know, obviously, um, I wasn't I wasn't contacted by anybody that put the report out. Uh, that'd be the first thing I'd say. Uh, you know, the second thing is I just, uh, you know, it only goes to head coaches and general managers, you know. So apparently there's, there's you know, people there that want to uh, put things out to people for, for a purpose. I don't, I don't know. I never understood that. Uh, the reply all, I mean, you guys know me. I'm not hiding behind anything. I mean, I just, we all get together, we meet, we sit in a ballroom. Apparently you got an email now, it's reply all. It's like me standing up or any other coach or any general manager or anybody that wanted to say something in the meeting. I felt the need to, to say it and address it. It's important, you know, coaching and playing and officiating all make up our game. Players more so uh, than anybody. And, uh, you know, we, we spent a lot of time on this in the off season. And the only other job that's harder than playing is officiating. So just trying to uh, make, make my point or say my piece. It's something you haven't said publicly previously, though. I mean, you said, you said pretty much the same thing here in training camp. Uh, you, you feel like you're not getting any traction in that regard? No, it doesn't matter. You know, what I mean, it doesn't matter what my my traction is. It, I I love working with the officials that that are uh, at our training camp uh, that come in. The conversations is amazing. Uh, the situations, like these guys working and talking with our players, watching tape, going through things. It's never going to be perfect. Neither is playing. Neither is coaching. Uh, but you know, just striving for a level of consistency. Each and every week, that uh, you know, things that that look like foul are foul, and things that aren't aren't. You know, so that you're not seeing one thing on TV one week and seeing something different the other, and say, well, what about? You know, it's like coaching, or you know, I mean, you can only you, know, you want to try to be as consistent so that one one kid says, well, they so and so, well, Tyler did this and he didn't get you know in trouble. Well. Carter, you know what I mean? That's what happens. They just try to set a level of consistency uh, w with the players so that they can understand that what they can legally do and what they can't. You know what I mean? If it's defensive pass interference because you're not playing the ball and there's contact, well, great. We all understand that. Is there a way you can voice that and kind of influence that with your role on the competition committee? Uh, my role on the competition committee is just to try to, you know, help with clarifications things that we talked about in the off season and uh, you know, 
say that, you know, just try to be involved in the meetings and, and, and say, you know, and try to come up with ideas that are going to help us. That's it. So let's focus on the Colts. And Have you considered moving Dylan back to tackle in this open time you've had, or are you guys just content with him at, at guard? Well, he's had to play guard. You know I mean, Nate, Nate, Nate was unavailable last game, and uh, he played guard last game, Corey, and, you know, we think that Dylan's got some versatility and some flexibility. Back. Eventually or this week? No chance. Potentially. Any other practice windows in general opening this week? That before? not that I'm aware of. Mike, you mentioned the limited time you get in the buy structure of the rules at this point. What's the balance there between maybe working on a few things with the self scout you talked about last week and just taking a few extra hours of prep for the Colts? Uh, I think it's it's a balance. You know, I think we try to, you know, do some self-scout stuff on Wednesday. I think we'll do a combination of both of those things uh, today and then, you know, work, work towards the, the Colts as we move on in the week. Do you anticipate having Nate and Imani back this week? Potentially. You talked about trying to find guys who need to play more and maybe some guys who need to play less. Is Chig, with his matchup, the problems he can create in the passing game, is he a guy, what does he need to do to be in there more often? I think it's a combination of just being able to function in, in his role and what we're asking him to do and, you know, block and some of the other things that we ask the tight ends to do. And, you know, I think he's, he's working hard. And, 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 again, I mentioned his ability to play on special teams. That's something that, you know, with a young guy that maybe didn't do a whole lot of it in college, uh, has been really good, and you know the speed that he's trying to play with, and you know, play on our punt team, play on our you know kickoff coverage, kickoff return. You know these are you know punt return. That's um, you know that's been good to see. Is Dennis? Um, you're optimistic that Dennis can can progress from where he's been, or is left tackle a spot that you have to consider options? I think we have to consider a lot of options, you know, throughout the roster. Announcement today with the mayor and uh, Burke up here. For from your perspective, how important is that for the growth, not only of the franchise but also the city? Well, just happy for our organization. Happy for you know Miss Amy, the fa you know the entire family, the ownership group, our, our team, the city. You know, as our cities continue to grow and the success uh, that this this city has had, um, you know, we want to try to be representative of that and you know, playing an amazing facility for our fans, um, for the events that it's going to hold and, and, and everything else. So, you know, that's, that's, am, that's amazing that we can, that we can start to move forward with it. Do they talk to you at all about what's important to you at, at that type of facility? Mm, I don't think I've been involved in those conversations yet. I haven't gotten the uh, wish list. <laughs> what do you think like about the grass at the surface versus, or the first thing, you get the hybrids now? the safety factor of that? Um, I think that that would be something to check with the, the Health and Safety Commission to see what the numbers are. I, I, I don't know what the numbers are, so I'm not going to speak and say that the percentages are this. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that they have them. I just haven't uh, looked at them. And you know, we practice on grass. I know when we go inside, we practice on turf. I know when we go to Indianapolis, we play on turf. When we play at home, we play on grass. So I'm sure they'll look at a lot of different things. So how comfortable does Matt Lyon look in their offense maybe than he did just two or three weeks ago when you faced them? Like any other quarterback, when there's no pressure, they all look really comfortable and really good. And when there's pressure, sometimes they don't look so comfortable. When guys are screaming at you, like any other quarterback. Their, their line had some issues, but yesterday that was 50. Got the ball out, got the thing. ball out quick. Yet yeah, didn't get any sacks, and they moved some guys around, and you know they played well, and they played really well. You know, and so we'll have to be, um, you know, try to affect the quarterback like we, like each and every week. Who, who might be some guys, Mike, that could be rewarded with more opportunity based on how they played through five weeks? And oh, we'll see how the week goes along, you know, see how it plays out on Sunday, but. You know, those are the guys that we're trying to identify, guys that help us win. Bud didn't go on IR. Do you think he's got a chance this week or today? Potentially. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, something that I, I won't necessarily say is long overdue, but we obviously have seen the growth of Nashville these past few years, obviously starting with I think it was our uniform announcement that had brought a bunch of people out downtown and then obviously the draft. So obviously, you know, getting a new stadium would bring a Super Bowl, which obviously bring, you know, more benefits to this city. So uh, super exciting to see. Uh, definitely. I mean, I don't know when it's going to be complete or nothing like that. Hopefully, you know, I can play my last couple of years in that stadium. So, but uh, like I said, it's exciting for the city. So hopefully they can get done. They're hoping for 2026. 2026. So was that three, four years from now? Well, I don't know. That's, that's, that's pretty far out. So uh, try to think about it right now. Like you said, the possibility of being there and obviously playing in the stadium, being the home stadium, it'd be awesome. But, you know, like I said, man, maybe some of these younger guys, they for sure are guaranteed to probably play in it. But like I said, from 2026, who knows what's going to happen there? I feel like we've done that like the past three years or so. I don't know if it's been the Colts. Usually at the end of the year, we always play Houston like the last two or three weeks back to back. Uh, so we're kind of used to it. Um, benefits, uh, I don't know about any benefits, but I mean, I guess us coming off a of bye week, having a lot more time to self-scout ourselves, but also uh, scout the, the Colts as well. And they're probably going to do some similar things that they did last time, especially things that they beat us on or, you know, did a good job against. So, um, but like I said, we kind of know what this battle is going to be. Heavyweight match. Uh, two teams going to run the ball. Not sure if Hines and Taylor's going to play, but I'm anticipating both of those playing. So they're obviously going to try to get back to running the ball and setting the tone down there. And, uh, you know, Matt Ryan had a really good game last week, threw like 37 times in the first half. So expect him to air it out a little bit more, too. Uh, yeah, I mean, you always want to have pride in beating your division teams. Uh, I don't think it's anything like um, we're just walking around saying, hey, we're going to go out there and beat them again off the rip. Uh, we understand that, you know, their owner and their entire team, their entire city wants to beat us. So we have to go in there with that type of mindset, obviously having a home game, uh, expecting a nice crowd out there at Nissan. So it should be a pretty good game. Mike noted that there's a there's pretty big limitations on what you can actually do on the field during the bye week with just a Wednesday practice and then today. Right, right, right. How much did this team get better and how in the last week? I mean, you can't really tell, honestly. Uh, you only can tell, obviously, building that momentum throughout the week at practice and then obviously going out there on game day. I mean, the thing you should anticipate, especially us as a team, you know, coming off a of bye week is guys being fresh, flying around, uh, all hats to the ball, trying to trying to have fun. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously coming off a of bye week, some guys are able to get away, refresh their minds or whatever. Um, but like I said, it's been so early in the year, guys should be fresh and ready to go out there and hunt. I mean, it'll be exciting. I mean, I, I know I haven't heard much about it. Uh, I saw it today just a little snippet of it, but you know, I think that'd be uh, not just exciting for our team, but you know, this whole um, city of Nashville. So. What does it do for the just the potential of the city with you know all the events that it could bring here too? I think it help our markets for sure, especially like with all the concerts that you see other you know stadiums having for, for sure. But you know, hopefully we can get a lot of wins in it um, first. Um, so I think when they bring a stadium like that and cost that much, I'm sure they expect us to win. So you know, hopefully we we'll just get some wins first. Jeff, how much can you guys get done actually over the bye week? Uh, Mike talked about outside, and really you just get a Wednesday practice in today. Can you actually get better in that time and how? Yes, for sure. First, mentally, you know, especially, you know, it's it's early. It's still, it was early. It's an early bye, of course, but you know, we played five games, and um, that's where we we could come back. You know, okay, this were especially defensively. You know, we if we take away the X plays, you know, we focus on not giving up the big play. That's where we could get better on defense because, you know, when we make team go go to go, you know, it's, it's always turns out good for our defense. And um, I think that's where we started on defense. You know, we just take away the X plays, you know, because we're doing, especially the last two weeks, um, and we played the coach, we played the, um, uh, Washington. Um, we did a great job of stopping the run. But it just, you know, the small things where we, you can, maybe we could um, affect the quarterback a little more for the not uh, let him go and make them deep throws like that. So I think that's just our next um, step, especially defensively. How can we um, communicate better, um, you know, pre-snap alignment, I mean, adjustments, stuff like that, where we can communicate and just, you know, get lined up and make sure we're ready to attack, especially up front, I, sh I should say. Um, so I think our next step right now, especially coming out this by, you know, let's, let's try to, not get, um, to give up um, to all these big plays. So. Did you watch the Colts over the weekend? Yeah, I mean, they, I seen they, they threw the ball a lot. Um, of course, they didn't have their two running backs uh, with Hines and um, Taylor, which we can expect them to come back this week, um, especially to do what they normally do, and that's run the ball. So, you know, we're expecting you we have to stop the run again. But we also, you know, after we stop the run, because we see, um, you know, Matt Ryan, he, 
you know, he was in a groove, especially the last game. So we have to affect him. So um, I think that's the thing. Stop the run and then affect the quarterback. Yeah, I was yeah I was watching. I was in Indy actually. Oh, so okay. uh, that's right. My family, uh, my fiance's family was there. She lives right by the, the Colts facility. So I was trying to get some extra, you know, sneak peeks and looks at practice. Okay. Um, but yeah, I watched that. Uh, it was a good game. You know, they, they came back and made plays when it counted uh, to win that game. Um, and you know, I got a sense that you know they're feeling pretty confident, and that's what we got to expect. You know, for them coming here, that they're feeling really good um, and confident in who they are and. and we're going to get their best shot 100%. How, how much does it help to have just seen them there? Yeah, uh, it's good. Yeah, you know, just off a of bye week, being able to watch them against a the divisional opponent. Um, you just, I feel like you get, you know, good film to watch, stuff to learn off of, um, in ways to, to try to exploit them, but also ways that what they're doing well uh, and what to look out for. The standings in the way this is so always so close to have a possible sweep of them in your mm -hmm. pocket. How big of a trump card would that be? I mean, I'm sure it'd be big, but I feel like the biggest thing is just winning the game, winning the next game, being one to know this week, uh, not thinking ahead of what it could shake out for the division. Just focus on winning, winning every game one by one, and then it'll shake out how it's supposed to. How excited are you guys just to have time now to continue to build on offense, the second half, and mm -hmm. the things that you need to improve on? Yeah, I mean that's that's what's great about this game, and, and coming back to work now after, after a bye week is you get to you know kind of reset, recharge, um, and come back with like I said a sense of urgency of. You know, it's exciting to be able to fix something. It's exciting to be able to have an opportunity to get better at something. Uh, and that's what we, we have today, you know, with this extra practice and then going on with the rest of the season. Nick, with so many teams jumbled up in the stands, you've talked about just winning. You've won three in a row. What's the opportunity in front of you now as you start the second half, a very long second half of the season, to try and get some distance between yourself and everybody else? Yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, getting that distance, but it's going to take, you know, a one and no mentality. Um, but that can, you know, give us a little, I wouldn't even say breathing room, because then that's what's when you get complacent and when, you know, start to fall off. So it's really just giving us a chance to, you know, just start heading in the right direction, continue, you know, improving uh, week by week, because that's how you end up, you know, going deep, deep into the playoffs and, you know, making a run at the Super Bowl.